Hello my fellow gamers and welcome once again to my SimCity video tutorials. In this episode I will be continuing on with my multi-city tutorial while I will be taking some time to talk about the changes that were brought by the 2.0 patch. The number of changes were quite numerous but there are only a few that can actually be seen during the gameplay or tested out in any meaningful way. The rest are somewhat changing just the routines of the AI that you can't really compare or unless you have a video of them doing the same things once before the patch and now again after the patch. So I will just point out the few that are really meaningful and that you can actually see the changes from. For me personally the most important change was the change of the medium density streets that now instead of having stop signs as it says in their tooltip they now actually create stop lights or the traffic lights whenever they intersect with another road. So this road which you remember from my uh, previous and probably the second video where I had the road planning tutorial you, there were only stop signs on this runabout and the traffic was flowing very easily. Now this looks like a mess. There's a million traffic lights right here and I'm not even sure how this is going to work out once I reach high density in the city and the traffic becomes really tremendous. I quite honestly do not know why this was changed. An additionally interesting thing is that this change is not even on the patch notes that you can read on the EA SimCity forums, but they were noticed on Reddit where one of the members from the Maxis team posted the patch notes for the 2.0 changes. Other than this change, there was a lot of talk about air pollution and the way that now suddenly it seems that air pollution is created somewhere in the middle of the city or coming in from the opposite side of the way the wind flows so it's actually coming in into your city even though you're pushing it out. As you saw just a moment ago I do not have almost any air pollution in this city even though I have five medium density factories right here, a coal mine here and an incinerator right here. Now this city it used to have huge amounts of germs all over these residential and commercial areas when I started to play because the first air pollution that I pushed out of this city with my factories with my coal mine came back into the city. Now this has been in the game since the start. I have played this game since the server launched on the first day actually the second when I was able to log in for the first time and that bug was there since then. Now other people have said that in their cities that were made pre-patch and now when they play post-patch they just get huge amounts of rain pollution somewhere in the city for no apparent reason. Well as you can see this city which you remember that I started pre-patch doesn't seem to have an iota of pollution anywhere else except maybe a little bit from these factories even though this should actually be far more air pollution than it is right now. So it is possible that they tweaked it whether it changes in direct ways on some cities and does not on others it is yet to be seen. Now since we are already here I will go back to my multi-city video tutorial by turning off the sewage outflow pipes and my water towers and now I will start importing the water and exporting the sewage from my new city. Now this city's profits will go up even more because it is no longer spending 500 on water or 300 for sewage. I have ran this city a little while longer so I have accumulated even more profits and this city is at the moment working perfectly. Another change brought by the 2.0 patch is how the fire engines respond to fires. Now I have since I have started playing this game, as I said from the first day, I have almost never used more than fi one fire truck per city, simply for the reason that they used to just go to the same fire and there was no point in having more than one when only one would put out one fire while the, the rest of the fire engines would just stack up behind it. So even as we are now in 2.0 patch, I would still advise you to only have one fire engine per city and not use any more than that even though they say that now fire engines are supposed to work better than before. 
Now, if you get a meteor strike and you have a really a huge amount of fires going on in your city, you can try getting more fire engines from the neighboring cities or building just for that occasion another fire engine and seeing if the patch will actually do something and make the other fire trucks go to the rest of the fires and not clump up in front of one building on fire. Now, like I mentioned before, since these medium streets now create traffic lights whenever they intersect with an avenue, that means that these connections that I used to make between two avenues with medium streets in order to create stop signs instead of traffic lights I can now simply destroy them and put back the connections between the avenues themselves since there is no more any point in having medium roads connect avenues. As for the changes to the tourism, to the profitability of casinos, I can't say anything about that. I do have a city in sandbox mode which I used for testing, testing of the changes brought by the 2.0 to tourism and casinos, but I would like to start a new city completely, so once I get this education city rolling and have a good connection between these two cities in my one of my next multi-city tutorials I will be starting a casino and tourism city on this plot and we will see just how much the casino specialization has been improved. Now let me bring you back to my second city, my education city. I haven't shown you what I have done with it after the roads that I set up. I will put on the land value for you first so you can see just how I set it up. You will notice the change in the colors because uh, the filters no longer influence the overlay colors so you may take some time to get used to that. Or here you can see four small parks for highland value that I have placed and they have created something like a flower right here which is now allowing me to have high wealth residential right here while in the rest of the areas I have medium residential and I have used these other medium parks to expand my medium residential because this city as an education city and maybe later on high tech industry city will require a lot of medium and high wealth citizens and workers so I have made sure to have enough land value to have a large amount of medium and high wealth citizens. I have made another big patch of high land value right here which has allowed for more high wealth citizens to make their homes while I have managed to place a few of these high wealth shops so that they can supplement the happiness that will be coming in from these parks. As you can see my happiness for the high wealth is already very high because they have these huge parks. Same goes here even though these are small parks there is four of them and with a few shops the high wealth citizens are very fast to gain happiness while the low wealth and the medium wealth takes a bit longer. Now as I started saying I have used again a way of spreading out high wealth and medium wealth and trying to combine as much of these different wealth levels as I can so I can reduce the number of people who need to drive to work. As I turn on the population overlay you can depending on the time well now it is 2 a.m. so it's really hard to see too many people around walking they should be asleep. These little fellows right here these are my students now you may ask what are they doing walking around at 3 a.m. this is because whenever I turn off the school which is here at 3 p.m. they cannot be driven home by school buses they have to walk so they go out of the school and then they start walking all over these neighborhoods trying to get back home. Now as 3 a.m. has passed I am now turning on my school so that I can start a new school day and educate as many of these kids as I need. Now I have specialized this city in education through this guide me and I have already filled up several of these missions gaining me valuable simulations while I have a few more of these missions still to go. Now this one requires me to add a department of education and have 500 students in one day which should be easily completed. While this one asks me to 
what a community college. Now, I do not actually want a community college in this city, I want a university. In order to make a university, I will need to have 1200 students in this city. Now, this school, even upgraded fully, will only give me 950, which means that I will probably have to build another school, fill it up with enough students, and then I will be able to build a university. But a university is not really necessary right now because I am still at low density. So once I go to medium density and I have a lot more students, I will be able to build another grade school, push up and above over 1,200 students, build a department of education in the city hall, and then I will build the university, which I will plop here. There is going to be plenty of room for the university upgrades and hopefully the students from the region will be coming in to this city for education. Now you may have also read a note in the 2.0 patch about the populations in the region will transit between cities better and that goes for workers, shoppers and students. So hopefully I will have students coming in from the region and I will be able to turn off the grade schools in other cities and have all of them come into the university which will also speed up any research and upgrading of this university. While I have talked about this, I hope you have noticed how I have spaced out my school bus stops. You probably did notice these over here which kind of followed the normal path of having uh, bus stops on one side of the street where I have my residential zones. In this neighborhood that's fine, but if you take a look at these neighborhoods down here, you can see that these are long stretches of road and now if you wanted to have these kids go to school by bus you would have to put bus stops on both sides of the street and that would increase your costs. Now an easy way to uh, reduce the cost of school bus stops and have as few of them as possible is to put them on these edges right here so that this way the kids can go on the left or on the right depending on which is closer to them while you do not have to put them on both sides of the streets because all of these children can go either to this one or to this one and depending on which side of the street their house is faced they can always walk to the next parallel street. This is also a bonus because once you actually get to medium density you will have to choose one side of the street to be the entrance and the exit from this housing. I have chosen that each time I upgrade to medium density I will be going up, 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 up to the upper street and if I were to keep doing that, up, going up, that means that I would have more than a few bus stops be unused if I had used this setup on all my streets, having one bus stop on this side, one bus stop on this one and once they all end up going up that means that the bus stops on this upper side of the street would have been useless and would become a waste of money by the end. So this is the bus stop setup that you should try and always make in your cities. As it will take me a while to get this city up to medium density, have a working university and in essence have this education specialization up and running, I would like you to leave your comments about any questions, tips, tricks that you would like to see explained or used in more detail and anything at all that you would like me to cover before I go to my third city and start making a gambling tourism city. Now this multi-city tutorial will continue depending on do you have anything that you would like me to go through before this or it will continue in one of the next videos with this city plot becoming my tourism gambling city. Thank you for watching, please stay tuned for more.